Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Um, for those of you who use Bitwig, I'm sure you know that it's a hugely creative tool. Lots of options for routing. Uh, but for those of you that maybe aren't experienced with it so much, I just wanted to show you a couple of examples as to how you can use uh, MIDI data to trigger other things. And what this does is it gives you a really nice sense of timing, tightness, um, uh, cohesiveness in your track and actually you can create really creative uh, textures uh, in ways that maybe you hadn't thought about before. So I just want to start off by showing you a sort of very basic um, sort of acid melody uh, that I used with my key step uh, 37. So uh, this is how it sounds. And if we look at the note data, uh, we can see we've got lots of separate notes. I actually programmed this in totally randomly uh, with the sequencer uh, option on the um, on the keyboard. And then I played a chord by mistake over the top. And actually, it kind of works. And I'm all about working with accidents because accidents happen and you either recognize that they're a good accident or not. So here we can see the MIDI data. And what we want to do, let's imagine, first of all, that we want to get a hi-hat that mimics or, or, or relates to this rhythm. So we can simply click on the plus button. We can type in hat. And we're just going to use Bitwig's uh, hi-hat generator, which is awesome. Now, normally, we'd play in notes um, and uh, using a keyboard. But we can be really clever and we can actually pull in the MIDI data from this excessive square preset. So we click on the track and down here, we're going to choose excessive square. This is the track input that we're going to use. So now when we play it back, And if we uh, trim this down, we know this works if we went to scale by, say, 50%. Hi-hat is copying exactly the same pattern. So this is awesome. Uh, and if we listen back to the hi-hat, can hear the little trills uh, that the um, MIDI data up here is generating. But what if we wanted to smooth that out? We didn't want it to be quite so, um, not random, but quite so erratic. Well, we can very simply add a quantize tool, which goes in the front. And now it's quantizing just on quarter notes, eight notes, Now this has got a really lovely tight pattern. If you add some forgiveness, it means it will let some of those uh, additional notes through now and again. So a really quick and easy way to generate hi-hat patterns, which is awesome. And of course you can do this with any sample. So let's imagine we find over here, um, let's say just a clap. And if we drag it into here, then it's going to uh, add it as an audio file. Uh, oops, I dragged it onto the wrong track. If we drag it onto an empty track, it will just do it as an audio file. But actually, if we drag it straight into here, it creates a sampler. So now we can trigger this from MIDI. So we can do exactly the same thing again. And here we can start to mess around with it some more. We could apply some filtering. And if we didn't like that particular sound, I'm sure you know this, but you can browse through whilst it's playing. Sometimes you have to turn the monitoring off. 
perfect. So you're getting up some really interesting, uh, uh, some really interesting um, textures. And again, we could probably copy that quantize module, stick it into the clap. And you might just want it on the eighth note. Okay, so that's percussive elements. What about vocal elements? Now I've got a lot of samples um, and a lot of kind of old B movie samples, and they're great and they're they're really really effective, uh, and they're very because they're old. They've got a lot of texture to them. So let's find uh, what have I got? So. <laughs> Now, you're probably never going to use a sample going February 16, but let's drop it into the sampler and let's see what we can do. So I'm going to use the uh, excessive square MIDI again. Now that doesn't sound very good. Uh, and there's a reason for that because it's just basically playing it like the pitch. You could turn the uh, keyboard uh, sensitivity down or the key track and of course you can change things like the speed. Starting to sound a bit more interesting. Um, we could also look at the different um, play modes. So we have cycles. Now that 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 already sounds quite sexy. So I'm going to try another one now. I, I want a slightly longer vocal. Random as hell. Okay, let's stick that in there. We're going to pull in the um, MIDI from the excessive square. Now, this is kind of jumping around, and there's not really much sound at the start, so we could find a different point. Let's use texture this time. Okay, not great. So here's something else that we can do. We can add a modulator. And I'm going to add the step modulator. And we can uh, uh, trigger this. In fact, we can do, I would do, um, let's randomize it. Now that's already a bit more interesting, but it's only starting from this point here. We're not using any of the rest of this sample. So how can we fix that? Well, we can click on the modulator button and we can go down to the play offset. And this is now going to move it all the way through the entire sample up to about there. I don't know why it doesn't do the whole sample. Uh, that's something I need to work out. Um, so what happens now? <laughs> Definitely more interesting. Let's go bipolar. So just by taking a very bog standard vocal sample and using one of the modulators uh, and messing around with the uh, play option, um, you, could all, uh, you can get some really interesting textures. You could also set this to, for example, mess around with the pitch or the speed. And if the sample isn't doing it for you, go and find another one. <laughs> I 
I like that one. So let's maybe just bring the playhead back a bit. Excellent. So you just get a feel uh, for for how it can work, and that's with the uh, the um, keyboard uh, tracking on. And now it's using the whole range of the keyboard. There are lots of options here as well. You can go with the groove. You can just let it run freely. You can even change. Um, the amount of whoops, the amount of steps. So we could, uh, sorry, what am I trying to say? We could change the uh, the rate of the uh, steps. If you wanted to kind of capture more of the words. Oh, it's too much fun. Just um, to show you kind of what I did on a on a project that I'm currently working on. Uh, so I've got that same bass line. And I found these ones, which I really, really like. So. And with just a little bit of filtering and adjustment. Uh, the sweeper is the by to noise, which is excellent again for just getting some of that filter texture in. I mean, this one was just totally by chance. Just that little rhythm that you get there. I would never in my uh, dreams have sort of come up with that um, organically. And now the track can start to take shape, all based on this one MIDI track generating hi-hats um, uh, and vocal textures. So I hope you find that really useful. Uh, leave comments in the chat below as to how you think other ways that we could uh, utilize um, those modulators. Um, and I'll see you again on another video.